One thing I'm going to encourage you to do today is treat networking events differently. I would encourage you to go in there with the mindset that you have a purpose for being there. Understand how many appointments you want to achieve, how many people you need to meet, who you need to meet, right? So go in there with the mindset of knowing who's there and what you're gonna to say to them and how you're going to accomplish that. Now, let me give you some quick pointers if you just are walking in and you maybe don't have a defined focus. So I would try to go deep with 20% of the room. Okay, I say 20% because that's just kind of how I did it, but you wanna go deep with them and not see everyone as a prospect. You're not there to sell, they're not there to buy. What you want to do is go in with the intention of building deeper relationships. So maybe you could get deep enough, a different deep enough relationship with them to go one or two levels deep into their networks and make them a referral generator for you, right? My purpose then would be to try to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with them after the fact. You want to try to create an opportunity not for you to pitch your product or service and not for you to hear their pitch necessarily, but I would even schedule 10 minute or 15 minute appointments with them to see what could come of it. See what you could do to help one another and go in with that premise, okay? Now, let me give you some other uh, shortcuts. So number one, you wanna have an idea of why you're going in there, know why you're going into that um, conversation or into that event. And then ask questions to find someone or something in common. Now that's pretty important because it will deepen relationships, it'll elevate your profile with them, but also it establishes immediate credibility. Let's say it's someone from your hometown that you know, right? If it's a good source for you, then that gives them immediate credibility and they apply or um, imply that credibility on you maybe that you had for them now if it's a bad source let's say you had somebody that um, maybe wasn't your biggest fan all right then you'd want to obviously back out of that and try to find someone else in common now if it's not working that way and you want to find something in common then a lot of people spend a lot of time in superficial conversations but this is the one time where the superficiality can work out to your benefit so you can find maybe a sports team or a where you went to school or a hometown maybe where you've traveled so these are important questions to ask maybe where what do you do for fun if you can pick up on their hobby then you have something to talk about right and that will give you that credibility and that rapport to maybe establish that one-on-one -on -one with them later okay and then you want to ask open-ended questions that require longer answers beside one word okay get them to talking the more they talk the better information you get as to how you can possibly help them right go in with the attitude of helping them not what they can get not what you can get from them okay and then make friends first the business part will come later uh, that's very important because if you go in with business in mind, they will read that and they will quickly get out of that conversation with you. You don't want that, right? So other things I would say is stay positive, okay? Because negativity, criticism, and sarcasm are relationship assassins and they will, that will not benefit you at all. And it doesn't matter who it's about, especially your competition, okay? But again, you're trying to get to that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And lastly, I would say take advantage of uh, Dale Carnegie's tips from how to win friends and influence people. You wanna smile, remember their name, uh, take sincere interest in what their hobbies are uh, and make them feel genuinely important. Okay, be strong and courageous. Catch us in the next video.